Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So finally, 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 the long-awaited, much-requested Iris Star video is here. I'm sorry, y'all. I've had this in my back pocket for a while. You guys are getting it today, and I'm excited that you finally get to see it. And so aside from just talking about our music, which I'm obviously very excited to do, we're also going to talk about some of the artists Iris influenced by and also some of the subcultures that influence her music and then some other collaborations and the things that she's probably going to be up to soon. So let's go ahead and get into Iris Star finally. Oyin Consola Sarah Adarabikbe, now known as Iris Starr, is a Beninese Nigerian singer born in 2002 in Kotonu, Benin. She was born to Nigerian parents but spent years of her childhood in Benin before moving to Nigeria, first to the capital city of Abuja. When she was 13, Ira and her family moved to Lagos. Ira was initially angry at having to move but also felt inspired as her mother told her she could chase her dreams in Lagos and she could pursue her music career there. But first, her mother said she had to finish her education, so at 14, she took her entrance exams and enrolled in university. By 17, she'd graduated from Lake Corse de with a bachelor's in international relations and political science. Before music, Ira started a career in fashion, signing a contract with Quove Model Management when she was just 16. Part of the reason she wanted to get into it was because at 5'4", she was told she was too short. And while modeling, Ira would post her song covers online, where she steadily grew an audience with people falling in love with her rich, smooth voice. She covered songs from artists including Georgia Smith to Baba and Andrew Day. When she was 19, Ira got her deal with Maven Records. She was discovered from her song covers on Instagram, and after showing off one of her own songs, which I believe she didn't even want to upload at first, she caught the attention of Don Jazzy, her now producer. Don Jazzy is also the founder of Maven Records. Ira actually wasn't the first in her family to get into music. Several of the women in her family are singers, and her brother Donnie is also a musician, and Ira writes some of her songs with him. She said when she first began working with Maven Records, she and Donnie would just have moments where they couldn't believe that it was actually happening. My brother is my partner, he's a producer also, and he's also a songwriter. We started writing before Ira started writing. Ira got her stage name after signing to Maven. Previously, she was known to everyone as Oyen, which was her nickname. Ira is a variant spelling of the Yoruba name Ira, changed to make sure it was pronounced correctly. This specific spelling is actually an Arabic name, which means highly respected and open-minded. The second part, Star, was suggested by Don Jazzy, and apparently her label mate Rima also helped come up with the name. So, Ira is an Arabic name. That means um, respected, someone that's respected. Eye-opening, just means walk. Mm. So, and that's what I stand for. The name was essentially a turning point, as Ira said she wasn't called by her stage name up until the very day her first EP, which was self-titled, was released. The EP, released in January of 2021, was produced mainly by Don Jazzy and Lauda and incorporates elements of Afro pop, R&B, and neo soul. The opening track, Away, is a calming, subdued song in which Ira commands that the person troubling her take those troubles away. The ever-present guitar and claps make the song sound like something you could just vibe or do some work to, but the pain in Ira's voice makes it so that you're hanging on to her every word. Ira said about the song, I freestyled half of a way at a time when I was feeling down. It was like therapy. Singing the song out loud was like freeing myself from my burden. Away is not just a heartbreak song. It's a song that empowers you to stand up to that thing or person that's causing you sadness. Away is an R&B song, one that heavily incorporates elements of alte. Alte, meaning alternative, is a genre and an entire subculture, honestly, emerging from Nigeria. It began forming in the very late 2000s, being officially named in 2014 when DRB Las Giddy member Bose referred to himself as an Alte guy in a song paper. Musically, Alte blends elements of Western, Caribbean, and Nigerian music, reflective of the various genres of music many of its pioneers grew up listening to, either because the music was local to them or they discovered other genres online or on TV. Some genres often incorporated in Alte music include Afro beats, dancehall, reggae, R&B, hip hop, and even indie music. Alte also takes a lot of inspiration from music from the early 2000s. In terms of making and performing the music, there's an emphasis on creativity and experimentation, but in a way that's authentic and expressive. And because of this, Alte doesn't necessarily have a particular sound. And Alte just doesn't refer to music, like I said, it's also a subculture, so it's also present in fashion, for example. Again, there's no particular look, sound, or style, and the most important thing is that it's self-expression and at times rebellion against traditional and often conservative ideals. TZ, another DRB member and one of the pioneers of Alte, said about it. Usually people that were doing things alternative or, or different from the norm are usually on the outskirts of creative society or outside of mainstream culture. 
over time we saw a community start to build like more like-minded people more people in all those creative spaces actually coming together and working together to kind of create an ecosystem outside of mainstream society I actually found a fashion blog online called Fast Tracker that said aside from music, Ira is an ideal fashion girl because she incorporates the Alte style into her clothing and noted there's often some 2000 inspirations there. You can even see the Alte style, I believe, in how Ira and her dancers are dressed in the Away video. Within a week of its release, Away reached number one in iTunes Nigeria and later the EP would also go number one in iTunes. The EP also charted at number four on Nigeria's Turntable Top 50 chart, helping bring Ira mainstream success. Just months after her EP, Ira released Bloody Samaritan, the lead single from her debut album, 19 and Dangerous. The Afropop song, penned by Ira, is one in which she sings about protecting her energy and aura, lest she be derailed by her detractors. Vibe killer, me and no go take shit. Vibe killer, bloody somebody time, protect my energy from your bad aura. In the first half of the song, Ira sings about these vibe killers and how she trusts in herself to not let them get the best of her. But by the second half, she sings directly to them, saying, I know you're watching me, even though you don't like me. She equates this to a sin, telling them to get down on their knees and pray so they can regain their faith. A bloody Samaritan to Ira is someone who pretends to be a good person, pretends to be concerned for others, but they're not. But Ira doesn't necessarily need anyone to be concerned for her, fake or genuine, because she's assured in her control of her own faith. To me, some of the lyrics almost read like mantras, reminding you that your outcomes are usually what you focus on, like the line, if you hate your enemies, enemies shine. Ira also directed the Bloody Samaritan video. She said she mainly wanted it to show her confidence in her personality, and in it, she sings into the camera for the majority of the video, the way a lot of us sing the songs that make us feel good and confident in front of the mirror. For the Bloody Samaritan remix, Ira was joined by Kelly Rowland and the Loud Urban Choir, who are Nigerian music ensemble. Bloody Samaritan went number one on Turntable Top 50, now Turntable Top 100. This made Ira the first female artist to have a solo song go number one on the chart. The song also peaked at number four on the UK Afrobeat singles charts. And little side note, this song will never not remind me of Breje, I believe his name is, the TikTok uncle. And before I knew this was an Ira Star song, I always thought it was some kind of praise song anyway, so it's cool to know that that was partly Ira's intention. In August of 2021, Ira released 19 and Dangerous. It's a concept album in which Ira navigates entering early adulthood and coming into her own, mostly as a person, but also as an entertainer. Ira said she likes naming things after her age, not necessarily to brag about accomplishing things young, but as a reminder to be present and able to link all those feelings and events back with that age later. The album opens with the track cast Gen Z Anthem. In the song, Ira sings about her tendency to overcomplicate her own lives by worrying what people think of us when they likely couldn't care less. The opening sample is Eartha Kitt's voice and comes from her 2001 episode of Speaking Freely. Ira said it's one of her favorite interviews. The clip was also used in the trailer when she was announcing the album. Because we're all listening to someone else, to some thing, without listening to ourselves. And not really living your life based on what everyone else thinks of you, that is an important message to enter adulthood with, and also a message to other younger members of Gen Z who may still feel compelled to impress people to fit in, which is a pretty common thing that we do in feel when we're young. Ira explained the meaning behind the title, saying, In Nigeria, when we say somebody is cast, it's like everybody knows her, she's been around. So I always get a lot of advice. Ira, don't go and cast. Even with the smallest thing, a woman has to be a hundred times more careful than a guy. She can't go to this place, she can't do that because she doesn't want to cast. The smallest thing can ruin a woman's reputation. But I've come to this industry to break boundaries. Rush, the second single from 19 and Dangerous, was yet another hit for Ira. Another Afro-pop offering, Rush is one about how Ira got her mind on her money and her money on her mind. You know, get the time for the hate and the bad energy, come my mind on my money, make you dance like boo. Like many of her songs, the lyrics in Rush are a mix between English and Nigerian Pigeon, so even if you know English, like I do obviously, I was still having to go back and make sure I was understanding some of the Pigeon. Critics noted Rush's fresh combination of Afro beats and synth pop. In their profile on the song's nomination, the Grammys wrote, The track may have a distinctive Afro beats clave rhythm and Nigerian Pigeon lyrics, but its glimmering synths recall early 2010's electro pop from the likes of Robin or Carly Rae Jepsen. And Ira herself said that Rush was inspired by 80s pop, and that's obviously an area where Robin and Carly Rae take a lot of their inspiration. Ira said living in several places has only made her music more versatile. She said it helped her adapt her music, mindset, and even her accent at times, which helps make her music resonate with people across generations and even borders. 
Rush also went viral online, becoming popular on TikTok and also becoming the most streamed solo song by Nigerian female on Spotify. Additionally, the music video made Ira the youngest African female artist to surpass 100 million views on YouTube. Honestly, the highest compliment I can give the song is that, try as I might, I cannot sit still while listening to it, which is honestly the case for a ton of Ira's songs. There's a coolness to them, like the messages of self-confidence aren't in the song just because Ira wants you to stream it and she's just telling you what you want to hear, rather she's affirming herself and it's infectious to both listen to and watch. Ira said she wanted the album to be a safe place for listeners, like a recharge zone, because she wants people to be able to relate to it, relax, and maybe even heal from it. A personal favorite from 19 and Dangerous is Toxic, which incorporates a little bit of trap. Why did you force me to take it? I thought that what we had was love. The song is about heartbreak in which Ira likens a toxic partner to the toxicity of addictive drugs. At the same time, the drugs are also a refuge and help dull the pain of the heartbreak. And aside from toxic only being about heartbreak, it's about losing people in general, something Ira said she had a lot of experience with from moving around when she was a child. Ashe is another favorite. It's very dancey and dreamy. Ira said she wrote this one back when she was 15, saying she always had a pretty independent outlook on life, knowing she didn't want to fit in or be influenced by others. And from what I've learned of it, I think this one really embodies that Alte mindset very well too. The entire 19 and Dangerous album feels like a collection of vignettes, like those little in-between moments where you know you're technically an adult but still hanging on to careless youthful behavior. Bridgerton is a very fun example, helped of course by the strings, over which Ira constantly sings, bitch I'm lit like that. I'm the queen, bow down, got all in my grills, my eyes, my cat. She flexes all her expensive fashion items, like her Fendi jeans and the opal in her grills. Though it could sound like playground bragging, these items are meant to represent the fruits of her labor, as Ira is both a self-proclaimed boss and queen. And of course, she personally loves fashion, but linking this to another song of hers, called Fashion Killer actually, clothes and expensive items are often Ira's way of not just showing off, which she has so that she likes to do sometimes, but also projecting confidence and uniqueness. And in Bridgerton, Ira prides herself on rule breaking, really risk taking, saying it's basically the reason she's now living like a queen, similar to the characters in the romantic period drama she's referencing. 19 and Dangerous peaked at number seven on the turntable top 100 albums, receiving positive reviews from critics. Many of them noted Ira's undeniable and palpable confidence and claimed they gave a clear picture of her artistic point of view. Ira has said in interviews that she actually does read reviews about her work, be it from publications or fans online, and what people say about her music does matter to her. Reviews mean a lot to me because it's like I'm literally making music for the world. Sure. As much as I'm making for myself, I'm trying to heal the world with my music. Because of her work on 19 and Dangerous, Ira was nominated for several Best New Artist awards. She was nominated at the African Music Magazine Awards and at the African Entertainment Awards in the U.S. In the following year in 2022, Ira released the deluxe of 19 and Dangerous. And soon after, Vivo named her one of their Discover Artists to watch for 2023 and invited her to perform some of the tracks from the album. Ira burst into 2023 with Stability, her first single of that year. The single cover has a similar anime inspiration as the single cover for Rush. Stability almost has this game-like sound to it. There's a sense of urgency in it, like you're trying to complete some sort of mission. You know I see sappy girl they do. And beyond the cover art, there is a connection between the two singles, as in Rush, Ira opens the song calling herself a sobby girl, which is one of her nicknames for herself, and then calls herself this again in Sobility. A sobby girl is Nigerian pigeon for a girl who is confident, successful, and knows herself and her worth. It comes from the slang word sobby, which means to know something. Sobility then is surely Ira again proclaiming she's a sobby girl, and in the song she details what it's like to be one and gives so-called proof that she definitely is one. But according to Badabox, an important part of being a sobby girl is also being yourself, as they claim, many people think because the ultimate sobby girl and the president of the sobby nation, Ira Starr, has her unique style, other sobby girls will follow suit. But nope, sobby girls are allowed to have their unique style, so you cannot recognize them by what they wear. And Ira said the American English equivalent of being a sobby girl would be something like being a baddie or an it girl. That spring, Ira teamed up with Tyla, featuring on her song, Girl Next Door. The lyrics are a different take on the phrase girl next door. Instead of just using it as a term for a relatable chill girl, they're warning, don't you leave me for the girl next door. It's not necessarily a song about begging a man to stay, but one that says, if you mess things up, if you leave me, I'm not waiting around for you to come back. And despite what the song's about, it's easy to find yourself just relaxing and vibing to it. 
The production is handled by Nigerian producer Prime, and he creates a breezy blend of Afrobeats on the piano and R&B. In July of 2023, Ira embarked on her first world tour called 21, her age at the time. The tour included legs in North America, Africa, Australia, and Europe. Ira was excited to finally headline her own tour after having only toured with other acts or been part of festival lineups. She said one of the best moments from the tour was meeting a fan who told her that she was naming her baby Ira after her. Ira was also nominated for Best International Artist at the BET Awards, having been nominated for Best New International Artist the year prior. And soon after, in August, she also received her first VMA nomination. Rush earned Ira the nomination for Best Afrobeat Song, also being nominated for her feature on WizKids Sugar. Yeah, I feel so blessed to be, you know, part of the generation that is bringing Afrobeats to the world. You know, I feel blessed, I feel grateful. I can't wait to see where Afrobeats is going to go in general. And I can't wait to see what I'm going to do with it, to be honest. Did you ever imagine that this is where you would be at tonight? Definitely, girl. What do you mean? In the United States, Afrobeats is actually one of the fastest growing genres in terms of popularity, with 26% more American streaming Afrobeats songs in 2023 compared to the year before. Ira's spoken several times about being a woman in a male-dominated genre and industry overall. But still, because of the likes of artists like Tiwa Savage or Tim's, Ira's glad that more women's contributions to Afrobeats are being recognized and rewarded. She's been vocal about how hard she and her female peers work on their music, and therefore that work should be recognized. One such example was in regards to how awards were given out at the 2023 Hedy's Awards, a ceremony created by the Nigerian publication Hip Hop World magazine. At the ceremony, Ira won the award for Best Female Artist, but for some reason the ceremony ended early, leaving 13 or 14 sources vary categories to be announced. And from what I understand, none of the women's categories were announced on stage. Because of this, Ira took to her Twitter days later saying, I will never be grateful for winning a category that wasn't even deemed fit to be announced on stage. Best female artist, not beans. We work hard, every single one of us. I've seen Tiwa record four hit songs in the same night. Tim's breeds and lives for music. We didn't deserve such nonchalance. Nigeria, you didn't raise me to settle for less. To Ira, it's important for her to show love to some of her female peers in music, often by collaborating with them, and similarly, she wants to honor female pioneers in her genre by sampling their work. She said that she wanted to show love to these women the same way that a lot of male artists show love to Fela Kuti, the father of Afrobeats. In an interview, Ira explained the choice behind the sample in her song Sorry from her debut EP, which samples a song from the Lijadu sisters called Orere Ele Jigbo. <laughs> the Lijadu sisters were primarily in their height from the 60s to the 80s and were actually nicknamed the West African Pointer Sisters for their fusion of Afrobeats, disco, and jazz. Ira told Vocal Media, the way men carry Fela, that's the same way I want women to carry these women that have worked so hard and people have forgotten their name. So I wanted to bring them back to the conversation, you know? These are powerful women that did amazing things. Let's look up to them. That's what I wanted to do. Aside from collaborating with other African female musicians, I did quite a few collaborations in 2023, only helping to spread her name further, and personally, I can't get enough of a few of them. One I've already talked about is her feature on Leanne's My Love. The song is an artful blend of Afrobeats, pop, and R&B. Ira was always the only choice for the feature because Leanne felt that she embodied the song's theme perfectly. I love that Ira is not only featured in her part of the bridge, but her voice is present in the majority of the song, even when Leanne's singing, which makes her presence feel like more of a collaboration than an insertion. The video, which was directed by Meiji Alambi, was filmed in Lagos, the city where Ira began pursuing her music. I also have to talk about Take It to the Top. The song, which has Ira and Becky G on it, was released early last summer on Metro Boomin's Across the Spider-Verse soundtrack. This song, though, is the work of Jamaican producer The Genius. And truly, the song is a fusion in the best way. The choice of Becky and Ira was perfect because both love to sing about their good fortune, of course brought on by their hard work, and aren't afraid to add a feminine flair to their music, despite both being in male-dominated industries. Last October, Ira, along with Lil Durk, featured on David Guetta's Big F.U. The song blends electro house, afro beats, and funk, resulting in a danceable track that almost makes you miss that the lyrics are a giant middle finger. At least until Ira clearly says several times, send a big fuck you to my replacement. I notice my key doesn't fit in your lock and you're blocking my call. But if there had to be a song playing when I realized my non-existent partner has moved on and left me in the cold, it would be this one. David Guetta said he wanted to work with Ira because of her crossover appeal, he claimed. Since we recorded, she's having even more hits. It's crazy. 
I'm French. I was in Paris and everyone was talking about her. I was shocked, like this is amazing. An African artiste is killing it in Europe, killing it in the US, it's not every day. Last time I saw this, I was working with Akon. And to his point, Iris Song Rush had gone diamond in France just a little bit before Big F.U. had come out. In November of last year, Ira became one of the inaugural nominees in the Best African Music Recording category at the Grammys. Like I mentioned previously, her song Rush was nominated, and Ira said the news came on a particularly low day for her, so the affirmation was much welcome. The other nominees were Shaka and Olumide, Burna Boy, and DeVito, with Tyla winning for Water. And at the beginning of last month, Ira put out Commas, her first single of 2024. Again, she asserts her lack of fear in what the future holds, singing, I carry God, so I fear nothing, steady increasing the commas. The commas in question can refer to an ever-growing list of accolades, the amount of places she's traveled, or commas added to her bank balance as the money comes in. The song is about resilience and how these commas and whatever form they come are a result of Ira fighting for her dreams. Again, Iris sings of protecting her energies, saying if she's somewhere the energy's off, she logs off or leaves. The song has a few Yoruba lyrics and phrases, for example, when she sings, I'm allergic to Isokuso. I found some translations saying this means nonsense or gossip, but please correct me if that's wrong. I also noticed that a lot of people are making TikToks to this specific part of Kama, so it must be a part of the song that resonates with people. According to Genius, Kama's is like an extension of Ira's last single before it, Rhythm and Blues. Rhythm and Blues is a little different in that it's more overtly a love song in which Ira is so in love with the person they give her butterflies in her stomach and it feels like her heart beats for them. But still, Ira references her music and her career, calling this person her muse and saying she'll make enough money for the both of them. Calmas is going to be part of Ira's sophomore album, which she says is intended to show off her vocal and sonic growth since her last. Ira said last summer her album was almost finished and said again in January of this year that an album is coming. So my second album is I've evolved. I'm 21 now, so it's probably going to be 21 and something. I can't give too much out, but sonically, musically, everything, my sound has evolved. So maybe this means the album is coming before her 22nd birthday, which is in June, but I guess time will tell. And y'all know the drill. As always, be sure to let me know your thoughts. Let me know your feelings on Iris Star and her music. Also, let me know her favorites her favorite songs. Let me know your favorite songs of hers. Mine, hands down, Sability, Sability. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I cannot help with feeling like that girl when that song comes on and that's the intention. So yeah, let me know your faves and Iris Star. And also, what do you think the album's gonna be called? 21 and something, maybe 22 and something, but 21 and fill in the blank in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter if you want to keep up with me there. And if you'd like to become a channel member and get early access to videos, the link is in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching. I love you all so very much, and we'll see you so very soon. Bye-bye.